Hello, welcome you all to the master class with Bruno Abeyan this year. Um, I am Zeynep, and of course I will let you meet with Bruno uh, deeper. Uh, but first, I have to say something about this uh, event. Um, you know, I as I entered the industry three years ago, uh, one of the directors that I uh, see was. Bruno Aveyan, uh, with a fil film of him. It was the one with, it was the one for L'Oreal, uh, with Leila Bekti. Uh, I don't know if you have the chance to watch it or not, but we will have uh, the chance to watch it here today. And as uh, I was amazed with the film, and that's how I meet him. And then, uh, till then, I was real. I became a fan of him and uh, from the start of this fashion film festival series uh, I was really uh, dreaming about Bruno to come and join us and so uh, today really it's my honor and my pleasure to be on stage with him and so thank you Bruno for coming again. Thank, <laughs> thank you Zinem for this presentation. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and before we start chatting uh, by the way, I will give also time to you for the Q&A session because I know there are many people here who are wondering Bruno Aveyan, uh, many directors, uh, many producers maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and so I will give time, but first maybe uh, we can watch a show reel. Yeah, just a little <laughs> introduction yes. about that because it's, um, it, it's, it's maybe not a, a classical reel because it doesn't represent the most recent work, but uh, it gave a, an interesting and large vision of my work for years, and there is some very old work in, in the same times. And uh, so I think it's an introduction, and again, it's not necessarily the last and uh, most recent uh, rock, work, but it yes. gives an idea. Yeah, okay. we will uh, want to uh, share this three minutes show with you. Okay. And we can film all of Wow. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Um, now, let's start with a very classical and traditional question. How did it all start? Yeah, I mean, it started like, um, it started a long time ago uh, really? when I was uh, a child. Uh, Every time, um, I didn't know what I wanted to do, but I was sure that I would do something with creativity and creation. I didn't put this word maybe on what I've done, but uh, I was drawing every time, and I want to be um, uh, a comics um, uh, drawer. Really? Uh, I, I loved comics. And I uh, entered in a fine arts school uh, in France. And then, in, during my studies, um, I discovered well, at this point, the only thing was interesting for me was the uh, comics, and uh, I interesting different way of expression on a visual point of view, especially painting. And uh, one very one great professor uh, introduced me to painting, and I was amazed uh, by uh, this world I didn't know so well. And uh, and then I wanted to be a painter, and I paint a lot. And from the painting, I start to discover photography, and then I start, of course, to discover. Uh, film uh, making, um, but from my point of view, it's this uh, journey um, have a lot of sense because I I still believe that you ask yourself the same kind of question uh, depending uh, you if you're drawing or making a picture or, or do a frame for a film, you're asking yourself the same question every time in terms of composition, in terms of uh, balance, uh, in terms of uh, creativity. So it's, it makes sense. And I, I continue to draw. N not, I don't have time to draw so much, unfortunately. And, uh, but I continue to draw, which, is, which makes a lot of sense when you do a film. You don't need to draw super well, but it le at least it's always interesting to have your hand uh, be able to um, uh, to show to people that you work with, because when you know when you make a film, you're never alone. It's, so sometimes you don't need a lot of explanation the moment you take a pen and, and you draw something. Everybody is a production designer, uh, your assistant, everybody gets it uh, very quick. So it's... Um, so, uh, so the image was all every time image. part of my uh, journey, okay. I have to say. 
And what I wonder is, uh, as we see your gorgeous own beauty, and I wonder about your definition of beauty, because I think it reflects your films mm. highly. Yeah, I mean, the definition of beauty is difficult okay. question. <laughs> 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 Sorry. Uh, but um, definition of beauty, I will say, from my point of view, on a on a filmmaking side, uh, it's not an aesthetic point. Mm. It's never an aesthetic point. Okay. For me, the definition of beauty on film and in art as well is about emotion. And from my point of view, whatever the aesthetic you bring and you put in your film or your photo or your painting, or whatever you're doing a sculpture, if there is no emotion, there is no beauty. And this is very fundamental for me as an approach and a general approach. The way I try to develop, even you can make nice image, stunning image, whatever, but if there is no emotion behind, it's never going to be really beautiful. It's, not, it's never enter in the heart of people. It's never move the audience. So maybe it's part of the answer, but... Uh, yeah, it's really the answer. Thank you. And from this part, um, when we say emotion, for example, I wonder, for example, some of the commercials. Yeah. Uh, I mean, do you um, sometimes refuse to shoot something? Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, and, and I think you have to refuse to, to shoot something, uh, especially in a commercial world. Uh, you have to, uh, it's important to have some fundamental rules, uh, ethical rules. There is some brand, I have to say, I refuse to work with them, and I'm not, uh, there is no, I'm not ashamed of that, because it doesn't fit my uh, philosophy or vision of life. I, I don't work for cigarettes, for example, I don't work for some brands, mm -hmm. I don't like what they are doing on, in the world. And, and sometimes I don't, I refuse, but I open a dialogue. Yeah. Because from my point of view, the best commercial you can make for a brand is not only about product, it's also the way you, can, you, are, uh, you are able to translate their DNA, the soul of the brand. And, uh, and from my point of view, what is more important is to tell stories and capture the attention of the audience this way better than showing the product and product and whatever. People are not stupid, especially in the world today where everybody has access to media and you cannot treat people as an idiot. This is what I say to brand every time. So don't think because you show your product every 10 seconds they will buy it. No. Tell them a story and maybe it's an invitation and maybe they will follow you. Maybe. And it was also a big surprise for us yesterday with Bruno as I told him the the film that I like the most in your uh, big portfolio, it's the film with Leila Bekti, and he was surprised because of this story behind. Mm. Uh, and you know, in Turkey, in our country now, this woman issue, the beauty and etc., what Bruno is talking about is really a hot topic. And that's why we talked about uh, showing you the film here also. Uh, so. Now we can watch the L'Oreal. Yeah, because Leila it's, it's not a very uh, known film for yeah. me. I, I don't even know if it's on the internet or not, but then it's, very, it's not very known, so I was surprised you knew him. Yes. Because it was a uh, premiere yeah. at Cannes, but then... Uh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's a pleasure. So it's, uh, it's more like... A, again, it's not like a commercial, it's more like a portrait of... Uh, yeah, yeah. Very much what I said before. It's, uh, you can see that the, the brand is a huge brand worldwide, and. But is, there is a way of different, there is every time a, a, a way to communicate differently if we want to. And, uh, and I think, especially in this period today, it's more important than ever. And uh, so nothing is fixed for, for age and forever. Even the biggest brand with a strong identity can move. And uh, I said to young directors, you can help them to move them. Uh, all, and this is, from my point of view, a new, a modern way also to talk of, of, about the beauty of women, to let them talk about themselves, to be very honest. And we will understand why these very famous women are also beautiful, not just because of a physical point of view, but because they have a, a great soul, they have a great life and uh, experience and whatever. And it's not, not, uh, not everything is about... Uh, uh, red carpet and everything. It's also a real, real human beings uh, beside. About glamour, we talk about uh, honesty, we talk about uh, authenticity. So I want to turn back to the audience and have some questions from them. Can you hear me? Yes. 
It's a great honor for us, as also Zainab said, it's a great honor for us to welcome you in Istanbul. Actually, we were expecting you last year, but this year, here you are. Uh, at the end of my university times, I came across with your work and I was really impressed, influenced, whatever you call. And even after the work of you, the journey, I took a ticket and I went to Iran. Just because of your work, okay. I really like you. Okay. And I want to ask you two questions. Uh, how can I say? If we focus on your portfolio, you have, of course, different style of works, but specifically and uniquely, you have a real great relationship with diamonds. You you like to use diamonds to create an optical illusion and creating a dreamy atmosphere. When that did you this idea came to your mind first? Uh, sorry, I miss. Uh, with what? By uh, with Diamond. diamonds? With diamonds. Diamonds. Yeah, yeah. In you front of the, the camera. The general. Yeah, yeah. Ah, you mean the the way the, on a photographic way I'm working. Exactly. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Um, this is uh, yeah. This is question. Uh, we are um, photographers, DP, and directors, and uh, ask me a lot of time. And uh, I used to. Search every time. I'm, I'm looking for a new uh, way to translate, especially on a visual point of view, uh, new sensation and everything. And I, I never feel very comfortable if we want to talk about technical point of view. I never really feel comfortable with uh, wide lenses. Lenses, for example. The reason why is. I, I use them sometimes, of course, and sometimes it, because it's the right uh, lens and the right uh, tool. But I never like when everything is overexposed. Mm -hmm. Because, on my point of view, whatever more wide and more perfect and more precise you want to show things, mm -hmm. and less emotional you became. Let me give you an example. <clears throat> if you go on uh, holidays with your girlfriend or wife or whatever, and and you have a beautiful moment, sunset in a fantastic country in India, why not? And it's a magic moment. It's an absolute, the light is amazing. You never see a sunset like this, and you will make a picture with your iPhone or your phone or whatever your camera is. And you come back home, and a few weeks later, you want to talk about this moment to your friends, and you show the picture. And then you did a fantastic wide angle. But you will understand clearly that what you receive as an emotion is never there. Because why it, it was so beautiful, and the image could be very pretty and very nice, but in fact, it misses a lot of things. But you don't understand because you show everything. No, but in fact, what you don't show there yes, exactly. is the other part, which makes this moment <coughs> very magical. For example, the wind in your hair, the smell, the moment, what you did after, what you did before, uh, the, when you barefoot on the sand, whatever, all that miss. And a lot of time when you want to sh expose things and, and you say, ah, I got it, in fact, you have what? You have a postcard. Mm -hmm. And if you want to translate a magic moment, sometimes it's better to don't show everything, to show one part. And in this case, if you show one part and you hide, and this is why I, I used to one famous artist to talk about my work and said I was uh, uh, making the dark with light, <laughs> which was a funny thing, but it's, in fact it's that. When I, I choose to not reveal everything in a frame or an image, I let the audience, I let the spectator make the, his uh, uh, imagination work. Mm -hmm. So you take it as an invitation and you ima your own imagination continue to work. And the emotion is stronger. So this is where it comes from. It's not just, and this is what I say every time, because I saw many works, and a lot of directors send me their work with uh, using uh, the same kind of thing. But guys, I say it's not a trick. It's not an aesthetic trick. If it's an aesthetic trick, you will have something, and uh, you will have something which doesn't touch really people. Yeah, it could look cool, but in fact, it's not an aesthetic trick. It's more about telling a story. Mm -hmm. And that helps for me to tell a story on an emo emotional level. So. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ikinci bir sorun daha mı vardı? Yeah, yeah please. I'm sorry. Uh, 
as a commercial film director, I really wonder your relationship with agencies. Mm -hmm. How is your relationship as <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, uh, usually they are good. Yeah. <laughs> but there are some agencies. No, but it's an interesting question because, <laughs> yeah, it, I say usually they are good, and sometimes they are not so good. <laughs> and, uh, wow. But at the end, they usually are very good, at the end. Why I say that? Because in the process of making a commercial, you have to face with different, you have to deal with different people, person, pressure, level, a lot of elements. And, and I say as an advice to young directors every time, uh, it's important for you to have conviction, it's important for you to refuse to, to do some job sometimes. This is what we was mentioning yeah. before. And it's important to fight for your vision. It's important to know how to fight. Fight doesn't mean be hysterical, aggressive. No, this is the worst, worst thing. Worst. But have strong conviction. Try to convince people. And it's very important. Why it's very important? Because there is a moment when you're shooting where Maybe the agency will ask you something to do and you, you know it's not the right direction. And if you, if you do it, and okay, so there is no conflict, they are happy, you're not happy but you say nothing, but at the end, if the film is a crap, it will be your responsibility. Exactly. And they will never call you back. <laughs> but if you fight, and again, on a clever way, and you convince them, even if it's not an easy moment, even if there is some tension, and if at the end the result is very good, and the, the commercial receives awards, uh, complimentary from, uh, success for the client and audience, and whatever, they will forget about the tension, and they will call you back again, and again, and again. You see, it's very important to understand that. I, I, it's, it's, and again, it's not against agency I'm talking. I'm working very well with agencies, and we have very good relationship. I have a big friends in agencies, and it's not. It's a human process. It's a normal human process. Facing when you face a lot of pressure, you know, you because they have also their pressure with the client. As the client have also his pressure, and and everybody have pressure, and you have pressure. So. It's important that at the end, the only one who has a very clear vision is the director. It's very important. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. Sorry. Uh, I have a question about the editing of yeah. your uh, films. Uh, I think that each commercial is edited a bit differently. For example, the first commercial I saw your, from your portfolio is the Magnum Five Senses yeah. film, so it which is. was quite old. Mm -hmm. But the recent work is quite different. So how do you approach the editing process? Yeah, editing process is something I'm very much involved in. And uh, there is a... Um, and for example, when you, you are, we was mentioning about how oh, is it to work with agencies, and um, I work a lot with uh, American agencies. And traditionally, by culture, the agency is editing, and the director is not editing. And this is something I make it very clear from the beginning. I edit myself, with my editor, of course, but I edit myself, which is a very strong position. Because I don't believe, you know, editing is so fundamental. And shorter the, the format is, more important it is. It's so, so fundamental. And you know, as a filmmaker, there is a lot of filmmakers in the, in the room, uh, it's uh, the same importance as a shooting. So you have to be involved in, the, in, in there. And you have, again, the same thing. You have to have conviction. If you fight well and if you convince people on a set, you, you have to continue to convince them on, on, uh, on the edit in the edit room. It's, it's very important. It's very important to be involved, to preserve your vision, to work closely to the, your editor. And the best, of course, is to, to work with an editor. You feel well because it's a very strong relationship. Uh, it's very important that the editor know you and you know him. It's very important that you share a lot of things in common. And um, voila. But it's so important to be involved in editing, yeah. Yes, uh, I really like your work. I mean, every every film is resonating a different uh, approach. Mm. Uh, the some films are longer. You direct this has like more poetic sense. It's like it flows differently, and the short you direct 
is a bit f uh, faster and more like on point. Uh, for example, like more fashion oriented or like more moment oriented uh, films. Mm. It's been like more aesthetically and like image wise, it looks like painterly, but it's just very short and just bam, bam, bam. It's just going like that. But some of them just flows very poetic and long and mm. it has an energy in itself. Yeah. But this is also something important. It's very, uh, as a creator, it's, really, it's quite fundamental to be... This is what I refuse every time uh, <laughs> during uh, my career. It's to not, uh, to not stay in one field. You, you can have your world in universe, but you have to continue anyway to explore different territory and different, you know, it's not because you make, because the problem for a filmmaker is to, to be too much in fashion, for example, or too much to be in, fa in fashion. If you are in fashion, that means that very soon you will not be in fashion. So it's very important to preserve, to build your own territory and to explore different fields, but every time in this different territory, you can bring a lot of imagination, creativity, but don't stay, you know, there is some commercials, uh, directors who only do cars, for example. I mean, it's, yeah, but uh, at one point you redo the same thing. Yeah, you can do cars, you can do fashion, you can do beauty, you can do uh, luxury, you can do uh, even main, main uh, uh, big brand, uh, no, not necessarily luxury, but you can every time bring your own vision for, to that. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sorry, I, 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 um, uh, excuse me, the yeah, microphone is on. Sorry. Uh, hi, as I remember correctly, you said you shot in India with Frida Pinto for L'Oreal. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, can we also watch that one and Rachel Weisz? Uh, no, to, I, oh. I didn't bring it with me, oh, okay. but um, uh, no, I didn't bring it with me. Okay, for fine. I will but search it online. No, it's, it's, it's in the future. Yeah, uh, they may, you may find them uh, soon on the uh, internet, but for the oh. moment they, they, they are not. Okay, internet. thank you. Yeah. Uh, any questions? Sonny Bey, Buyurun. get into the emotion of that person, hmm. beautiful women, whatever, so and you try to find some very authentic locations as well, I mean, yeah. I think, I mean, for a French director, you're a, a little bit more open-minded, I might say, I mean, because, I mean, you use very Arabesque culture, Shalimar, Garlan, I think that's one of the most interesting locations that's ever picked in fashion and or mm. personal uh, personal care category. I mean, I, I think uh, they're not that open to exploring that Arabesque culture that much. I mm. think in the L'Oreal film as well, I mean, mm. seeing Algeria, an Arabic speaking woman talking about uh, that locations, I think it's not so easy for uh, the beauty industry, I mean, mm. to be talking about yeah, you're right. it's uh, not easy. Uh, those things. So what moves you and how do you uh, convince clients to go to that Uncharted seas because they are unexplored territories. Um, yeah, but it, 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 it joins the point uh, I was mentioning previously. It means you have to convince people. Nothing is coming like this. Nothing, never. Even the simple things you have to fight, but in a clever way you have to uh, convince people. And um, regarding what you say about authenticity, this is for me quite crucial. And uh, it's very important for me that. Uh, the story I'm developing, I propose to the viewer, should be, the characters also, should be grounded. Uh, we should have an organic feel. Even if you use CGI, I always said to my team and to everybody, the magic is coming from the camera. The magic, if you expect the CGI to make your film interesting or uh, cool or emotional, it means you lose. You film, even if there is, when there is a lot of, again, CGI involved, like the Cartier, you probably, the film should look magic already. 
And when I mentioned Cartier, for, ex for example, is a good. Cartier was a big challenge. It was the first brand ever, first, first film brand ever of Cartier. Uh, Cartier never did a brand film before. So when you are, your name is Cartier and you make your first film, I mean, it's a big expectation and big challenge and big stress, as you can imagine. What um, I, I work a lot on the story and the development, of course, on the, on the concept, but I knew one thing from the beginning, that the Panther, who was supposed to be the hero, I didn't want a CGI Panther, which makes my life and all the, li the life of the producer much more difficult to work with a real Panther. But in fact, I said to everybody, this film has the potential to, have a, to be a huge success in the world till the moment we have a real Panther. Every single round could be a real location as well, I said. But of course, we, we will have CGI to make it, uh, but the hero should be a real Panther. And, and I was very happy to convince everybody because not everybody was agree with me. It was, oh, nah, it's going to be impossible. You cannot bring a panther in the snow, in a mountain. You can bring it. Oh, yeah, yeah, we can try. We'll see. <laughs> and in fact, they love it. We did it. But, uh, and the panther love it. But um, it was, from my point of view, the reason why the film uh, had such a worldwide success. Because people uh, feel immediately that we tell them a story, a real story. If you do everything in CGI, yeah, it could be very cool, impossible move, camera movement, whatever you can. Enter. But you will have a, a very cool piece of film, but it will be more like a vid video game trailer at the end. So you watch one time, and that's it. But if you want people to watch it and watch it again, you, have to, you, you need to establish a very strong emotional connection with them. And this is why I insist a lot of time, like we were talking about lo real location, uh, grounded character, strong people, panther instead of a CGI panther, is the same story, because you create a strong and immediate emotional connection with people. So do you think, uh, I mean, is it because you're Bruno that they accept, or is it because you're smart that they accept? Sorry again? Sorry. Is it because you're Bruno that they accept, or is it because you're smart? So is, is it about your heritage, or, your, or the things that you have done, or is it because you, you, you are really uh, a fox that, I mean, that is eat? Yeah. It, it helps. More you do things, more it helps. Yeah, notoriety helps, of course, to convince people. They, they trust more, more and more and more, of course. They say, yeah, he did crazy thing before, so maybe we can trust him. Yeah, that, but, um, but even when I was a real beginner, I, I was insisting on this. And you have to push the limit. You have to push the limit. Not, I, I stay every time, okay, storyboard on a commercial is a contract. So the, there is no way to make things completely different from the storyboard if you accept the storyboard. But besides this, consider the storyboard as a base, as a canvas, as a map. So you shoot this, and this is a contract. It's normal. You do. But besides this, what can we make better? What can we push in the production limit, of course, that then means to expose everything, as she's a producer, so you'll see what I mean. No, that's very important, but what can we make better? Sometimes it's not just, it's not a crazy things, but okay, just the way an actor will move, will look, ah, it, it was, she was not supposed to look like this, ah, but let's make, ah, the light was not supposed to be like this, but maybe it's interesting, or et cetera, et cetera. Let's explore more and more. And this is the way to have not a good commercial, but a very good commercial. Sometimes it's 5%. Yeah. Uh, OK. Yes. Hey, Shay, in Arkada. Hello, really very nice to meet you Hello. this evening. And uh, I have actually two questions to you. First is, um, you talk a lot about uh, some emotional point in movie, in photography, I guess, so also. Yeah. So I would like to ask you, how do you find this emotional point? Uh, and also second question is very close to the first one. Uh, from where you get your inspiration about your film and to create something. To create Thank something. Um, 
the inspiration you find you find in a different level. You find the uh, inspiration in a in a, I w from my point of view, the best way to find inspiration is to connect with different experience. It could be traveling, it could be meeting people, it could be. Uh, this is why one of the reasons, for example, I, I, I shoot to in Paris, but I never like to shoot in Paris, which is my where I'm based. I'm traveling a lot, but I'm based in Paris, and and uh, uh, all the world come to shoot in Paris, and I, I don't like personally. I hate to shoot in Paris because it's my everyday environment. So it doesn't touch me the same. So, but at the moment I arrive in a place like in Istanbul and uh, with a fresh eye, I catch things with a strong inspiration immediately. I see new faces, I see new people, new energy. And this is the best way for me to, to find inspiration and, and beauty inside, of course. Yeah. And about this emotional point, um, do you think uh, creators should use uh, some kind of psychology or uh, what is it for you, emotional thing? How do you find it? Sorry, um, could you repeat it? Uh, how do you find, uh, how do you create this emotional um, thing in your uh, films? Uh, what is it for you, emotional? Yeah. What does it mean? I mean, wha wha emotion is the most uh, difficult and the most easy thing to get. Uh, in the same it's most difficult because, first of all, why? Because you cannot build, you cannot prepare, you cannot, there is no recipe, honestly. And this is also the way I'm working a lot, um, personally, I s try to stay very reactive, very intuitive on set, every time. Even when the film is a big film with a lot of crew on set, um, I try every time to preserve uh, an area where I will be very, uh, stay very instinctive. Because you have to, to translate emotion, you have to, to be very sensible to what you shoot and to be, re to be able to react on the last second. Or maybe something move, like you shoot, you walk with the children and she looks a different way, the light change, like I said before. And okay, let's build something new, very, very quick. And this is a moment Maybe it will never happen to time. So this is the end of the masterclass with Bruno Aveyan. And I again want to thank you for him, for coming. And I will keep on saying thank you uh, until Monday. OK. <laughs> so, OK, thank you to everyone. Thank you. It was a great audience. It was a big pleasure to be here for me. It was uh, in Istanbul and to this dialogue with you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.